Alrighty guys, how's it going today? So this is about a day or two after the snowstorm that we've had there. Winter storm hunter and uh I forgot to clean here though. I'll have to do that. Um I managed to get through the four foot drifts. Um I got stuck right here though. Not surprising. But yeah, I managed to open everything up. I had to push my snow up against the house. That's the only way I could move it. Hitting a pretty big pile there. We had even opened all this. We uh, got more snow than they were saying. And we just didn't need it, but uh, I just got to clean this. And then I'm done. Um, I, I went... Well, I did took me all day. You can see that the guy with the bobcat was even out cleaning this parking lot there. Um, the reason why it took me all day was because I could only go for like 5-10 minutes at a time and then I was frozen. So I could only go for 5-10 minutes and then I had to go in. I went in for a half an hour to warm up. Um, so I was done by 7.30 that night started at about I suppose at what about one noon noon or one anyway that's when I started and then had to clean this twice and then the end of the driveway twice because then the road grader came by wasn't too bad though but um I got a couple I got one thing I'm going to talk about and there's an experiment here I'm going to try so let me flip this camera around and uh, we'll get to that Okay, so there's an experiment I'm going to try real quick. I'm not going to say it's not going to say that's going to work. Um, you guys know these cow tags, you know, I bought a while back. I got it dirty already. Well, you have to have a bit to engrave these, and I, the place that I bought these from does sell a bit, but they're very expensive. They're, they're like ten dollars a piece. I'm still going to have to order one. But I had this bit here. I'm not gonna say it's gonna work. I want this one to try it. It's some kind of a. It's not a, the right kind that I need. But I'm just gonna try it because I have nothing to lose by trying. And the cord's already stiff. Can you believe that? I haven't even been in here for five minutes yet. So I'm just gonna try it real quick. I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna work. And yes, I probably will kind of wreck a tag a little bit here, but if I do get anywhere with it. But it don't hurt to, uh... There we go. Wrong way. So they say it has to be all the way up to 35,000. Well, I don't know. If that's true or not. But we'll give it a quick try here. It does work, but... Ah, come on here. Okay, so that does kind of work, but it's not as easy. Um, just the tool fucking dirty though. So, it's very difficult though. So yeah, I, I did wreck one tag, obviously, it's to try it on, but you know, it, you know, it is what it is. I could still use this tag if I really wanted to. I think I'm going to have to get the... Uh, that shirt and bit though, I think that'll work a lot nicer. Um, 
they did say to start off lightly and it, and it only it works better going this way first and then back over it again it seems to help it a little bit I don't know why it does but it does So I don't know, it, it does work, but I don't know if that's actually ideal or not, but it makes kind of a loud noise too, you guys probably can hear that, but um, it does work though, but I don't know if it's the correct, the correct thing or not, but it's definitely not the right bit, but it, eh, it works, as long as it works, I guess that's all that matters, but I'm still going to have to order that. Oh, that expensive bit though, just to see if that'll make it easier to use. Because uh, it's not very easy going one way. This cord's already stiff. Definitely do not use these things out in the cold. That is for freaking sure. It's definitely not ideal with this thing. So, uh, it is what it is. And it is cold out. It's like minus freaking 25 out. But there's not much for a breeze. So that kind of helps, but uh, so I guess that bit does kind of work, but it's not a, it's not the right one though. But it'll have to be if I need to um, expose and grape something real quick. But I doubt I'll have to anytime soon. But um, because it's kind of just I don't I don't think my calf will be having its calf until probably. Now, yeah, definitely a lot closer to spring, um, because the bull came here a month later than normal. So, meaning my calves should, the cows should calf a month later then. And from what it says on the Weather Channel, we're about 66, you know, 65 now, days away until spring, which is what two months. So, it's not too bad. We just got to get past uh, January, so that quite shouldn't be quite so damn bad after that, you know. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm just gonna tell you guys now. There's a couple of videos that did not make it to YouTube while well, they were on YouTube, um, but they got not copyright or anything like that. But they just got flagged for not having ads because they're not ad friendly so um eh, eh whatever they weren't really important so I had one video that did make it up you guys seen that one but I deleted that one um just because I was cleaning out my videos and stuff I actually think I deleted about over a hundred videos um what not so yeah, and I was sick and tired of looking at them because they weren't getting cleared and whatever. I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm done with it. I have one video that's still flagged, and you got that guy's that video. You guys already seen. It's still up. I think it's that that cow tag video. Um, so I guess there's just certain days you shouldn't upload. <laughs> I think to me it seems like it'd be right around the tenth. That's when you're not supposed to upload anything. To me, that seems like that's the day when they're going to flag the shit out of your videos. Because I had a lot of videos flagged that day. Some that were even up, that have already been up for a couple of days. So I would try that. If you plan on uploading videos on the 10th, uh, don't. <laughs> that seems like that's the day when the robots are they're at their most stupidest. And they uh, flag your videos. So, I just had to hell with them. I figured you know, it's just going to start a big argument anyway because everything I say is wrong apparently. So eh, it is what it is. So I had um, I had a comment on my video this morning when I got up. Um, some guy was saying to get to buy some calves to bottle feed to bat to bottle feed. Um. 
you know, to raise and then just sell them later on. Here comes a freaking box. I thought they didn't do anything on the weekend. Stupid. Well, the problem with, with bottle cap or bottle feeding, okay, it's not a huge deal. Like, you can do it. I mean, there's plenty of people on YouTube that do it. And it is a good way to make some extra, some extra, you know, some more money. Um, the problem with me, the problem with me doing that is I have no way of going to get them, okay? There are no cattle auctions within range. They're all at least an hour away, okay? So that's not really going to happen. You need a good pickup to do that. And other thing is, we don't have a good pickup, and we don't have a good trailer. We don't ha we, we don't even have a trailer to go get them. Okay, so that's not going to happen. I'm not going to go ask the young guy if he can take me there to go get them because, you know, he'll just he'll just say that there's no point in doing that. Really, you know, um, he'll, he'll he'd probably just recommend me to go buy some of his. Well. That's fine and all, but then you're just going to turn around and sell them. Probably, I'll just probably end up selling them right back to him again. Um, so, I don't really know what calves go for, but I don't see it being much of a... I mean, it would probably give me a little bit of extra money. But, <clears throat> to have to go to a marketplace to buy them, um, you know, or to a cattle auction... It's, it's not going to work out for me because I have no way of getting there to go get them. And I don't know how much calves go for, but even then I don't have the money to pay for a calf. Even if it's just... Because I think they rate, they, they price them by the pound. So... So I think calves usually go for a little over a hundred bucks. You know, for usually more than a hundred dollars. I don't really know. I don't really look up the prices. You know... Okay, well, what's what good is it going to do to buy one cow? Because that's really all I have left every month. Um, that's the thing that people don't understand it, and I'm getting really getting sick and tired of people telling me what to do. Like I understand that you're helping me, but clearly you're not watching my videos enough to understand why I can't buy more cattle or anything like that. Because money, there's no money in my paycheck you know every month and what, now why is that let me explain i have bills to pay and i have the highest electricity bill right now because we have been in a deep freeze and it's been minus 40 pretty much well for the last two months what does that mean that means i'm using a lot more electricity to heat my house wishing in return gives me a higher bill at the end of the month and the, and the bills fall a month behind that's just how they work so you know being in this deep freeze bullshit I like it because I don't have to plow snow I haven't had to plow snow in quite a while then of course when I did have to plow I had a, had a shit ton of it but you know I like the deep freeze because I don't have to plow a lot but then yet it's hard on me because there's no money to, to be to be there okay you know so I understand that you know yeah sure go buy a couple of ca you know a couple calves two or three whatever however many raise them up and then you can turn turn around and sell them back you know and get double your money okay that works in, in a perfect world when you already have a truck and a trailer to haul them and you have the money to pay for that I have none of that we do have a pickup, but the pickup is useless. Okay, we don't have that pickup doesn't have four wheel drive, so you can't get around like you would want to. The damn thing is not going to be able to pull a trailer, even a small trailer loaded with two or three calves, because with the weight of the trailer and the weight of the calves, you know, depending on how many calves you can fit in it and how many you get, you're already maxing out that truck. Because we've thrown up to 3,500 pound bales in the back of that back in that 
in the back of that pickup and the whole way home all the transmission would do was slip. That's not exactly a good thing for a transmission when it's slipping. So that's why we try not to haul bales with it anymore. We try to keep extra on hand so we don't have to go get bales. In the last few years, it's been pretty good that we haven't had to do that. It's been years since we've actually had to go do that. We've always had bales left over. Um, we still had plenty of bales left over from last year that we didn't even use. Uh, we're actually, we just got done feeding all of last year's hay bales this month. So all the bales that we're feeding, I believe now from this point on, is all going to be last summer's bales you know, 2017's bales, so those are <laughs> your freshest hay, you know. So the cows are going to probably like that a little bit more than, the, than this, you know, last year's bullshit hay. Um, and I think last year's bales were a little bit more weedy than they were this year, you know, 2017. Um, there's less, there, yeah, there's more thistles in there, but basically when the thistles dry up, they're they're just tiny. You know, you, you, you don't even see them in there. So, but the year before that, there was a lot of bird oxes and shit growing in there. And there's no point of cutting that and feeding it to your cows because they're not going to eat it. And it's just a waste of fuel even bailing it. That's why I've been working so hard trying to spray the damn weeds down. But I think they'll like 2017's bales a little bit better. It'll be a little bit easier. And they'll just like it. It'll taste better. <clears throat> so if I had a pickup and a trailer and some extra cash floating around that's probably what I'd do I'd probably buy at, at least three or four or even five I don't want to buy too many because we're not going to have all the room for that because we have to make sure that we have room for the ones that we do have now you know so you know, because they're going to be capping. Now, it's going to be closer to spring, sure. It doesn't matter if it, if it was July, really, because when we have calves, we stick them in the barn for at least a week, week or two, you know, to make sure the calves are going to be all right, you know, and we keep a close eye on them. So, you know, we're not going to leave them out, especially during the winter, obviously. You know, we're going to keep them in the barn. So... And there's only so many cattle you can keep in the barn. <clears throat> you know. But. I understand that one cow's not going to do much for me. But I have to start somewhere. And this is started. I had someone leave a comment on my on my video a couple days ago. Um, I just deleted it because I was sick and tired of looking at it. And he's like, well, when are you going to actually start farming? I already started. You know. It's just that. I'm not making tons of cash. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works in the real world. You literally work for free until you know, that first paycheck rolls in. I would have had a paycheck rolling in, I think, this winter if my bull was still alive because he would have been old enough now to where I can go and sell him. And, I, and usually when we sell bull calves, well, basically they're a lot older. Well, they've been weaned off at that point. Um, we just turn around and sell them to the young guy. And he can do whatever the hell he wants from there. We don't take him to the marketplace or whatever. We don't do that ourselves. We, we just sell them to him. And then he takes them and does whatever the hell he wants from there. Because we're not able, able to do that because we don't have a pickup strong enough to deal with it. And we don't have a cattle trailer. A, a good pickup and a cattle trailer will be an investment later on in life. It's just not going to happen today. It'll probably be 20 years from now. You know... The thing that would help me the most is just to, you know, get rid of a couple bills so I have a little bit more money to myself. So either I can pay off, make a bigger payments towards another bill, or try to make an investment in something that's actually useful, you know. So it means either. See, another thing too, I don't really want to buy another person's cow. I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. But the reason I don't really want to do it 
is because they're already tagged and I would have to take that tag out and then put my own tags in. Um, and, and in there I think I would even have to change colors because I kind of want to keep my personal cow separate from any other, anybody else's cows. You know, That's why I went with white tags instead of yellow because I want mine to be separate from my uncle's. And I didn't pick green tags either because that's what my uncle's got. He's got green and yellow. So I want my cows just to be strictly white tags. I'm going to have to give them special markings so I know who's who. You know, I haven't thought about that. I just can't put like a number one or there should be some kind of a symbol there or something too. Um, to say, you know, this is the mother to this calf, you know, and blah, 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 you know, because... I was just going to name them, name them, you know, just like one, two, three, four, five, and so on, but that actually might get kind of confusing as well when number five has had a calf and you're trying to name that something else. So just numbering them like that, I don't think it's really going to work for me anyway. I might have to either think of some kind of a short name or give them, just give them a letter or something, something to mark them so I know who the hell is exactly who. Instead of just giving them a number. Um, so. But yeah. So. Going out and just buying a calf. You know from the marketplace or whatever. It's not going to work. You know. I'm not saying that it, it wouldn't work on our operation. It would work. But. The problem is going down there and picking them up. And then having the cash to pay for them. Sure, if you went and bought a calf for, let's say, 120 bucks, and you grew it up, it got big, then they're worth more money, you know, obviously. So, naturally, you just double your money, but you have to be the one that has to go get them. Unless you're, you're willing to pay more to have somebody haul them, okay, well, that gets to you more money, you know. So then, so then therefore, you're just spending money. The best thing I can do, and this is this is how it's only going to work for our operation. Our operation, for my side anyway. I don't give a shit what my uncle does. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. But I'm thinking of myself. So, the best thing I can do if I wanted to buy calves or another adult cow is I'd have to buy it off the young guy. Now he's he's always willing to sell cattle to me. He even said that if I wanted to buy another cow, I could. I could go down to his place, pick one out, and I can either make monthly payments towards him, towards it, you know, or he, he'll take it all up front, however I want to do it. We just, we just make monthly payments. Because when my uncle lost his life, because he had one cow left. After that one cow had somehow fell in the pond and she couldn't walk anymore, she died eventually. And then we had one calf, or one cow left. I think she was the one that died giving birth. Because um, they had to cut her open. And of course the calf was dead. And she was dead. Uh, she died I think a couple days later, or a day later, or whatever. So then basically my uncle was left with no cows. So, <clears throat> the young guy said, well if you want to continue on, I can probably sell you a couple of cows. And you can do whatever, you know. So basically what ended, ended up happening, because obviously you got to pay him. So usually kind of what we do is, well, what he's done anyway, <clears throat> is that when he sold the calves or the cows to my uncle, they were already pregnant. So technically you can buy pregnant cows. Well, I think no matter what, you're going to buy them pregnant anyway. But, you know, if you wanted to make sure they were pregnant, you could do that. Um... And then, when they calf, obviously, when, when they have their babies, <clears throat> he'll just take the calves. And that's the payment towards that cow. So, that's technically how we pay him back if we buy a cow from him and it's already pregnant. We'll just let him keep the cow, the calves, you know, usually after we're, then once we're done paying for them, then we start keeping the calves, you know. There's always ways of paying paying him back. We can either pay him in cash, either in like a monthly payment thing or all at once, or you can just let him keep the caps. You know. So that's really the only way it'll work for us. 
And why drive an hour or something south when I could drive 20 minutes to this guy's place and go buy a cow? For technically about the same. You know. It would, it, it doing that wouldn't pay for it. It, it. I don't think I really, I mean, yeah, I'd make some money back. But you guys think about the fuel you burnt going there, the tire wear, and then coming back again, burning fuel. You're burning even more now because now you're loaded. And tire wear, you know. I mean, tires last quite a long time, but you guys, it's mainly about the fuel. You just burn probably, well, if you have a gas pickup, you're not burning that much, but I plan on getting a diesel, so diesel's going to burn a lot more. Technically, they say it burns less, but uh, whatever. So, let's say if I burn $100 going there and $100 back, that's $200 worth of diesel fuel I just burned. I better get my money back on investment. Now, technically, I probably should because the cows would, will be worth more when they're adults and when they're weighed properly. But, when you have to take them back to the marketplace to resell them, there goes another $200 down the drain for shipping them down there. And then if you want to have it done by a semi, you know, if you want to pay somebody to do it, well, there, there goes another probably $500 probably. So going to a, a calf place, you know, a cattle auction, really isn't going to... In, isn't going to give me a lot of money back in return unless you have the stuff yourself and you're already rich to begin with you know and you got money to spend well I don't have money to spend so <clears throat> the thing I want to do is I just want to see if my cow will have a calf again this year she should and then possibly next winter um, I possibly may buy another cow. Either I'll buy it off my uncle or I'll buy it from the young guy. There's no point in me going far, 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 far away to get a cow when I could just literally drive 20 minutes and go get me a cow. And he can bring it to me. Because he's got all that. He's already got a good pickup and a trailer and all that stuff to haul cattle with. So it works for me to just not buy calves. Unless he's willing to sell some. But, you know... I don't know. So, and then, of course, and then to, to bottle field, to bottle feed, you need to have those, those, uh, baby bottle looking things, you know, with the nipples. I don't know if we have any of them. We should have at least one. And then, you gotta buy the, the powder stuff, you know, that's, that, that all costs money at the end, at the end of the damn day. Whereas if you just let your cow have a calf and pray to God that it'll suck off the mother, you know, you're not spending any money then at that point because the mother's pro providing all that for you. So you kind of have to can, you have to think about too all the stuff that you have to invest in as well when you're having calves, you know, especially when you're bottle feeding them. Now, obviously, if your calf doesn't suck on the mother, well, that that's not good. You know, then then you're forced to bottle feed. Bottle feed. Like I said, I think we have at least one. I, mean, I think we should have at least one or two floating around somewhere. Where they're at, I don't know. I haven't seen them in years because I haven't really been into it all those years. I it was just I was mostly just out in the fields doing stuff out there. But now, since I'm actually getting hands-on now with actual cattle you know it's different it's different from just climbing into a tractor and going baling hay you know that's what I'm used to that's what I grew up doing was just baling hay and and repairing things helping them to repair things you know or learning things off them well however you want to look at it now I'm doing it different now I'm doing a little bit of that and then now I got a cow on top of it so it's a little bit more it's more to deal with now, but it's not as bad because I only got one. Would I like more cattle? Sure. I definitely would like more. I'm not going to be like my uncle where he only wanted one or two. He's got more now, but that's the kind of because my, my grandma kind of forced him to keep them because there's not... 
my uncle wasn't really making much off that, you know, it's like, well, why do you even bother? Like, it was enough to support his cigarette habit. Yeah, that barely even got him by. And then he spent the rest of his money on electronics and, you know, he didn't buy anything to invest in towards the farm. It was all invested towards himself. I'm pretty sure with all the money that he's made over the years of doing this, because he's been doing this a lot longer than I've been, obviously, I've only been in it for, what, two, three years now. Um... He's been in it a lot longer than me. With all the money he's made, I think he could easily afford probably at least two of those 1586s. If you get them decently used, you don't get them shiny and new looking. I mean, he could have invested in a better tractor because we know the 400s wore out, you know, and, it, and it, that needs thousands of dollars worth of work. You know. But see, the thing with, with him is that he's not really into it. Not like I am, and not like obviously like the young guy is. I mean, they're doing it for a living. So, you know, for me, I'm going to be doing it for a living because, you know, I grew up doing that. I grew up around it. You know, so I already know a lot about it. Working at an office is not an option because I don't know nothing about working at an office. And I don't like that kind of lifestyle. I don't want to be in the city, you know, dealing with those kind of things. I'd rather be on my own farm, working my own hours, being self-employed pretty much, you know. I don't need to work for other people, you know. Being in the cattle business is not going to make you a lot of money, and it's going to be slow going. People, A lot of people on YouTube think that, oh, you're going to make a million dollars in your first two years. No, it don't work that way. People that say that kind of stuff don't know the first thing about farming. Farming is a lot of hard work and you have to invest a lot of your own money into things before you get any of that money even back at the end of the year. So, you know, that's just the way it is. That's the way it works. This is the real world. This is not fantasy, fantasy land, you know. So, it's going to be slow going. It will be. But depending on... I need to know what my calf's going to have. My cow, I should say, because she's not a calf anymore. But I need to know what my cow's going to have. Now, if she has a girl or a boy, either way I look at it, it's a damn good thing. But if she has a boy, okay, well, sure, then I'll make a paycheck, but then I'm not growing my herd either. So... I mean, either way you look at it, any, the, you know, the way I look at it, either way, it's a good thing for me. Either I get a paycheck at the end of the year, or I can grow my herd, right? But if I don't grow my herd, I may, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go out and invest in, an, in another cow, because one cow isn't going to do it, obviously. So, you know, if I sell a bull for $600, let's say, roughly $600, um, I can either take that $600 and turn around and go invest in another cow with it, or I can go pay off a bill. And I really need to be paying off bills, but then in a way I need to, you know, get another cow. So, that's where you have to really be thinking. If I get $600, I could split that into $300, you know, there'd be two stacks of $300 there. Invest the first three hundred into a cow, and then invest the other three hundred into a into a, a bill. You know, so at least I'm doing something with my bills instead of just you know not paying a little bit here and there, and hoping in time it, go, it goes away. Got to make those big payments to help get a bill down. You know, so you, that's there too. You have to really think about what you're going to do with that six hundred dollars when you get it. Do you want to put it all towards a cow, or do you want to put it all towards a bill, or do you want to split it in half, or, you know, you got to think about those kind of things. Now, if you split it in half, and you want to make a 300 down payment towards a cow, then you still owe another 300 towards that cow. Well, therefore, I'd probably rather just pay the extra 300 a month, you know, $100 a month, and, and be done with it in three months. But... There's probably a pretty good chance that if I do buy another calf, um, I'll probably end up buying a calf because 
Well, technically, yeah, it would be a lot cheaper, actually, if I did do that. So, because a calf would probably go for, like, 100 120 bucks, whatever. Whatever the, whatever the current prices are for North Dakota, I don't know. I can't go by Minnesota because I'm buying it from him, and he lives in North Dakota. So, he's going by North Dakota uh, prices. So, <clears throat> I don't know. But then if you buy a calf then it's going to take probably at least a year before you even make any money off of her, you know. So there's a lot of, and you got to do a lot of thinking, you know. If I could spend, say, $120 on a calf and then put the rest of the money down towards a, you know, a bill, then at least I got two cows then, you know. Meaning I just increased my herd by another cow. Well, yeah, of course, that's not a lot either. But you have to also understand, too, that I can't grow my herd overnight. To where I want to get, it's probably going to take at least five years for me to get to where I would like to be at. Now, I could buy a cow every year. And, sure, I'd have five cows in five. I'd, well, I think I'd have more than that. But, well, yeah, about five or six in five years. Okay. Well, that, that's a pretty good, but I don't want to have more than that, you know. But, see, the thing is, too, we're limited to how many cows we can have because my uncle's got more now. I was kind of hoping he would just stick with one or two because then I'd be able to shove a lot more. Yeah, I'd be able to shove a lot more on there. But my grandma had to open her big mouth and say, well, you need to keep more, you know. So she kind of ruined it on my end, too, by opening her big mouth. But, uh, what are you going to do? But one or two is definitely not going, you know, it's not going to do a lot. But it's a start. There has to be a start to everything. You just can't jump into it and buy 10, 15 cattle and be like, oh, I'm a big time farmer now. That's where I would like to be in the next five years. I'd like to have at least five to ten cows walking around. But I'm not going to say that's going to happen, you know. So it's gonna take it's gonna take time. That's why a lot of people don't understand it. This is going to take time. So no matter which no matter which way it goes for my cow that I have now, it's going to be a plus. So she has a bull, great, sell the bull, and then there's your money. Then you then you see how much money you get, and then you can figure out how you can split it and invest in another calf. Whatever, you know, and pay off a bill. I got to pay off my bills too. I just can't keep investing money towards cattle, you know. But the problem being, right now, you guys have been watching my videos obviously over the last few months. I've been investing a lot of money towards cattle equipment. You know, this was part of the cattle equipment and then the tag. Um, this year was almost. This here, the Dremel tool, of course, and I bought that that multimeter, but that's a separate thing. This was, you know, like $25, $30, this tool. The tags were like $35, and then I bought the tagger thing. That was another $25 or $22 or something like that. Um, so I've, I've invested well over $100 into this stuff already. And then I've sunken already probably a little over $100 into the tractor and that tractor's yet to make any money back I've, I've yet to make her any money back on that so but things didn't ex exactly go to, to my liking either so there's nothing I can do about it you know I gotta just you just gotta keep going that's what YouTubers that's what some people don't understand they just think oh you have everything go do it now go go get it all you know whatever that's not gonna happen there's no money there to do it you know, every farmer, when you first start off in farming, you will start off with very little. Maybe one tractor, if you're lucky. And then one cow. You know, it's going to take time to grow my herd and get it to where I think it's enough that I can make a decent amount of money off it every year. I'm only going to make money off these cows once a year. You know. So, 
that's the way it is. I'm not going to be making a weekly or or a monthly payment on, or a paycheck off this. This is going to be a once a year thing. So that's another thing too is I got to start making a lot of money back too. I can't keep sinking money, you know. But you know, it is what it is. So just to let you guys know that you know it's not all, you know, it's it's just. Things don't go to your to your liking, and it takes time. People that sit there and say, "Oh, you know, go get yourself some calves and whatever." Okay, sure. Maybe it's easy for you. Maybe you live close to a, a cattle auction place, or you have a truck and a trailer to go get them, and you have the money floating around. I have none of that right now. Okay, and I can't go out and make the investment into a pickup and a trailer because there's no money there. You know. Get what I'm saying? For me, I'm going to have to start from the bottom and work my way up. So that means having one cow. Alright, well, that's the way it is. Until she has a calf, well, we'll see what happens. If she has a calf, then then it's good. If it's a girl, I keep it. I just take the bitch and keep her. And then if the boy, you let it grow up a little bit and then you sell it for however much you can sell it for. And then it's up to you what you want to do with that money then. You want to invest in towards another cow or pay off a bill. You got to remember too that the more cattle we have, the more hay we have. The more hay we have to use. And we're getting less hay every year. This year we, last 2017, we got, what, 60 something bales out of just our field alone. And we, and you know, that's not good. And the young guy, he wasn't happy because now he got less share. And in the year before that, we had like 110. Well, I think the reason why there was such a drop in in hay is because for one, it didn't have all these damn weeds in it, you know, these burdocks. I'm sure that's probably what made up 90% of those fucking bales. And the hay is getting shorter every year. But I think that's because the young guy doesn't want to invest any money towards the hay. Because it's poor quality hay, there's nothing there. So he wants to plow it all under and replant new stuff. That comes all out, all out of our money too, you know. So everything takes money and you just have to work on one thing. We already planted our grain field with some new hay. So we're going to be getting some hay out of that. And then whenever that hay is good enough and ready to be cut, we're going to plow under the big square field, just a big square field, I think, for now. And then we're going to plant new stuff in that, and then, you know, that's going to probably take a year or two. You know. So there's not going to be a lot of hay around. Which is not going to be good either, because I, that's another reason why I don't really want to have too many cattle either, because we're not going to really have all the hay that we need. Sure, I'm sure we can go buy some, but, you know, that's just more money. I'm trying to save money a little bit along the way too. Not have to go buy four hundred dollars worth of bales. So, but, yeah, we'll figure it out once we get to that point. For now, all we can do is just take it one day at a time and just hope that we have a better year than last year. Last year it was a disaster for me. I lost money. If it happens again this year, I think I'm. I may just call it quits because if I'm just going to keep losing money. There's no point in me investing money that I'm not getting back from, you know. So hopefully we don't have any more accidents like we did last year. And of course, this happened to be my cow, and now well, there went my calf. My could could have been a six hundred dollar bull. Whatever. Shit does happen, but eh, you know if it keeps happening, if it happens again this year, I'm going to be very frustrated and screw it then. Because there's no point in me carrying on when I'm not making any money back in return. You know, but not every year might be like that though either, so I don't know. We'll just take it one day at a time and hope shit goes right. So, anyways guys, I'm taking off because I'm freezing my ass off and I still got to plow a little bit of snow here. So hopefully I clarified that for some of you people out there. That's the reason why I'm not buying calves because they're too far away. And I don't think there's much money to be made back on that, especially if I have to haul them somewhere, you know. 
And I don't know if it would make much sense to go buy them off of him for 120 bucks and then turn around selling back to him. I suppose it would be, but I just don't think I want to deal with that, you know, right now. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to set to see what happens, but other than that, that's kind of the reasons why I'm not really doing it. Especially for long travel. Anyway, I'm not doing that. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna help me. It's not gonna make any more money for me having to go long distance. If anything, I'm just better off going short distance and buying a, a cow and then just keeping it. You know. So, but whatever. We'll worry about that later on. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I need to see what my calf's gonna do first before I think about buying another one or something. It is the way it is. So. Alrighty guys, I'm taking off, so I guess I uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Take care easy.